Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with my April book haul part one. So the books that I've been sent by publishers, some that I've been gifted and some that I've bought myself as bookshops have opened in the UK and it's been very exciting. Anyway, let's start as always with books from publishers and two of my most anticipated reads of the year. The first of which is Dear Senderan uh, by Kweki Ameze, a black spirit memoir. And this is told through letters uh, that obviously give memoir and insight into a Kweke Ameze's life. I'm so excited about this one. I have loved every single one of their books so far and they have become one of my absolute favourite writers. So when this arrived, I was overjoyed and will be reading it very, very soon. As I will, Deborah Levy's Real Estate, which is the third in her living biography and the last one, and I'm gutted. And I almost started it on arrival. And then I got that nerve thing where you've got an author that you love so much, you know, this is the final one of their works, like not ever, but like in a particular um, trilogy, which I've enjoyed so much. I've read the first two this year. Um, but yeah, I need to get to it because I'm so excited. But at the same time, I don't want it to all be over, if you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, her insights into her life and her writing life are fascinating and I just love her not only her prose but her outlook on life her sense of humor which is quite wry and quite dark um and yeah just enjoy being lost in her words now a book that's coming out uh when is this um I think it's in June or July um is this which is assembly you can't tell because it's the proof edition cover um but this is by Natasha Brown and this sounds like it's going to be really really incredible this is um about a black woman who is going to her partner's like a, a garden and fate almost on their estate and it looks at race it looks at class and I think it does it in a really distilled short sharp way so this one I shall be reading very very soon indeed because I can sneak that one in between some women's prize reading which I'm still doing at the moment and um, then this book arrived with cookies I mean what more could you need in life and also a books are um, magic uh, tote bag uh, because the author um, Emma Straub owns um, Books of Magic in Brooklyn where I've been and it's a brilliant bookshop. This is all adults here. I don't know how many of I don't know which number of her books this is because I know she's written a few and I've meant to read her for years um, and this is all about Astrid who sees, um, she's 68 years old and um, she sees like a fatal accident happen and decides from that moment that she wants to live her life with more authenticity and be more direct and um, so she decides to start with her children but are they ready to be grown-ups and see like the grown-up her I think this is going to be really 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 interesting so yeah I should be heading to that soon then from the lovely folk at Tramp Press I got Corpsing uh, by Sophie White which is my body and other horror shows now I've said I would like to read a lot more uh, essays going forward. Um, it's something that I haven't really done in my reading life particularly. Um, I've been listening to some actually on audio. I'm really, really enjoying them. And um, yeah, this one I am very, very much intrigued for. Um, I think it looks at health, uh, mental illness, uh, grief, addiction, and sometimes the... Uh, the Sometimes the hilarious cruelty of life. I also think that cover is brilliant. So I want to head to that one soon. These books, like, they're going to be super fun. And I still haven't read the first one, which is Death Goes on Skis. Um, Virago are republishing Nancy Spain's Mysteries. And this is Poison for Teacher. I think they're quite what ho. But I discovered Nancy Spain when I read the most incredible um, graphic novel last year that looked at the history of the LGBTQIA plus community. And Nancy Spain was somebody I hadn't heard of. She was um, a TV presenter, she, a radio presenter, and she died uh, very early, quite tragically. After, and she'd started writing these um, mysteries and they're all introduced by Sandy Toxic, who I love. Um, so yeah, and I, the fact this has got like a, I suppose it's meant to be a school, not a country house, but I'm very much in the mood since having been to a country house earlier this month or last month, maybe it might have been. Um, yeah, wanting to get, no, it was this month, it was Easter. Um, wanting to get to some more books that have that sort of country mansion setting i'm just in the mood for it so we'll see how i get on with that one now the lovely folk at uh, profile books and serpents tale sent me a um selection of books because um i was uh, i got an email asking if i would like this which is resistance uh, by val mcdermid and Catherine briggs and it's a graphic novel i don't know much about what is in here at all all i heard the word all i blah, 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 blah. 
all I heard were the words Val McDermott graphic novel and I was like yep I'm totally into it so yeah I think it's going to read a bit like a thriller I think it might have something to do with medicine because it's also uh, published by um, Serpent Cell and Profile with the Welcome Collection so yeah I'm, um, I'm intrigued I'll show you a bit of the inside of the illustrations um, it's all uh, done in black and white um, so yeah, I'll report back because this is something that I can probably devour in an afternoon. So again, another book that I can read in between the Women's Prize books. Um, I was also sent these next five books, uh, the first of which is Man Enough to Be a Woman by Jane County. Now, Jane um, County was, I think, one of the first trans uh, punk stars, I want to say um in and um, she was in a band and it was at the time of the stonewall riots and it's a bit of queer history that i don't know enough about and should educate myself on much more um but drew at serpent's tale was like i have to send you this book you have to read it it's incredible and so uh, i'm going to it's been published as one of serpent tales classics um and i love the pink that's gonna go very well with my bathroom wall for an instagram picture i'm just gonna say that now i mentioned in my 39 things that i want to do in my 39th year that i would love to learn more about cheese and i'm hoping <laughs> random but true i'm hoping to be doing a video in a cheese shop in the next couple of months so uh, if there's any thoughts on what you would like that video to include please let me know in the comments down below but before that i'm going to read a book that i've been looking at longingly for ages and just haven't got around to so when i uh, heard from profile and seven's tale i was like drew can i please have this too and he said yes um it's a cheesemonger's history of the british isles by ned palmer and that i feel is all you need to know it is a history of cheesemongers in the british isles and um, it's got pictures i mean there's going to be lots of cheesy uh, face in here that are going to get me want to raid the fridge, aren't there? Let's be honest. But uh, yeah, I just thought this would be really interesting fun. And I think he has another book coming out about cheese uh, soon. So I'm going to have to get my mitts on that one as well. Um, another book, uh, I've been going to the beach a lot more and I want to learn more about things that I don't feel I know enough about. I think in my last wrap up, I talked about, um, what was it? It's down here, salt, fat, acid, heat just down there literally because I haven't filmed my one in one out yet and I will be soon but um I mean there's enough books in here to oof, this is one in one out it's going to go crazy um anyway these won't be part of that the other ones will moving on Simon move on get on with it um, and one thing I really want to learn about because I live near the sea is seaweed and um so I'm going to be learning about cheese I'm going to be learning about seaweed I want to be a DJ and at the end we'll well i'll be talking about something else i really really want to learn about um but yeah this is the seaweed collector's handbook by meek zamborn and um, i'm looking forward to going along the beach and sort of trying to find some gramophone for example or uh what does this one say here oh that was where i flicked to um quickly truffle of the seas i don't actually like truffles um anyway i'm really really looking forward to finding out more about this i just think it's going to be a really interesting book about nature as well and seaweed is something that i've not contemplated enough but feel i should contemplate more i was going to watch seaspiracy but i don't know if all of you have seen all of the like hoo-ha about how it's not factually correct and that's been quite interesting the netflix show anyway moving on um kate moss is a author and a woman that i absolutely adore this is her first non-fiction i believe it's an extra pair of hands and it's coming out in june and this is all about um sorry caring aging and everyday acts of love and looks at the relationship that kate has had with um older people in her life those she's cared for and i don't think we talk enough about elderly people and there are more elderly people there than there have ever been before um so yeah it's something that i think a lot about like old age and what that might look like and all those kind of things and i think this is going to be um a real emotional moving uh well book and account um so looking forward to that as i am um and i should say emma is a friend of mine uh, looking forward to the final book that serpent's tale sent me which is uh, after the storm by emma jane unsworth who is a woman that I adore um, and it's postnatal depression and the utter weirdness of new motherhood and knowing Emma as I do um, I think this is going to be very frank very direct and also very funny even though it's about a quite a tricky subject to put it mildly um, so yeah heading to this one very 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 soon so uh, I shall report back hopefully in a wrap up in the not too distant future because wrap ups are back I'll link my latest one down below then we have um, from WNN who are part of Orion this is out in June uh, Nothing by Daniel O'Connor and this is about a man who is hit in the head by a golf ball and when he wakes up he can remember literally nothing but what he starts to be able to do is make things 
happen or so he believes. So he can make things disappear or appear or guarantee people could be safe if he wishes it, he believes. Um, so is it true? Is it not? What's going on? Could be something, could be nothing. See what I did there. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, this memoir sounds like it's going to be incredibly heartbreaking and... Yeah, I think it's going to be a devastating read. Um, it's consumed by Arifa Akbar, who um, is a journalist who I really respect. She's just quite a few prizes as well. Um, and this is all about how her sister became very ill and everyone thought it was just going to be some sort of short sickness, a bit of time in hospital, but then be home. And actually, she sadly died. And this is um, all about the, well, the grief that followed from that, but also how it was whilst it happened. And I think it's a look back on on um, a sister that she never had, but how would that relationship have been? Um, and yeah, I think it's just gonna be very, very, very moving indeed. Now, I asked for this book um, because I was very, very excited for it when I um, saw it and looked into it. It's called Dreamland, and that cover might be my favorite cover of the year so far. Um, it's by Rosa Rankin G. And this is all about um, Margate, which is where Dreamland is. And I'll link a video I did in Margate when uh, me and Chris went to visit Lauren and David because we went to Dreamland. And Margate is kind of a bit of a ghost town. A lot of people left um, after the heyday of its sort of seaside resort status declined. And um, we we head there in the sort of not too distant future when the seas have risen and people are moving into the inland even more. So this, what was a ghost town is now completely a ghost town. I mean, at the moment it's kind of up and coming Margate, but this, this doesn't, uh, this reimagines what happens, you know, if there's an eco crisis and what's going to happen to possibly beach resorts. Anyway, um, as people are moving out, one family moves in and we follow what it's like for a family who have been living in bedsits and um, on different estates and moving around a lot when they suddenly move near nature and all this space, even though there's sort of this threat of the awful going on behind and the people they meet there and what happens. And I just think it sounds like it's going to be amazing. I've seen some corking reviews, but not really heard that much about it either. One of those books. Um, so yeah, want to read that soon too. Then the lovely folk at Hodder sent me Amanda Block's The Lost Storyteller. Um, and this is a book all about books and stories. And it's about a woman called Rebecca who has never really known her father. Um, he was a TV presenter, a kids TV presenter, I think. Um, and then he sort of just disappeared. And what's happened is there's been a book discovered, I think, which is Brewing With Fairy Tales, of which the proof came with one of the seven tales in it, which I think is genius. Um, and so she realizes that actually these fairy tales might not be quite as um, unbelievable as you'd think and that the uh, there may be some possible truth within them. And uh, I love a book about books, I love fairy tales. I'm intrigued to see how um, Amanda Block does that. It's a debut and it's out in July. Um, this book is out very soon. I'm recently listened to um, I mentioned that I've been listening to essays and I recently listened to this author's essay collection, Funny Weather, finally, which I have wanged on about on this channel for ages. This is Olivia Lang's new collection, Everybody, a book about freedom. I think it's also about bodies medicine, alternative medicine, but also very much about artists. I think there's going to be stuff in here about Christopher Isherwood, I remember being in the blurb, and Nina Simone, and Malcolm X, and Susan Sontag. Um, and she really writes incredibly about people and the work they've achieved, and somehow does it without... Um, you don't have the work in front of you, and you go off and Google more of books that make you do that, and yet she gives you enough inference so that you almost can visualize it anyway if it's say art um or music that you haven't seen or heard um yeah so really really keen to get to this one very very soon um and faber very very kindly sent me uh clara and the sun by kazu ishiguru i feel like this book doesn't need any you know, like introduction because it's been talked about a lot i was actually going to hold off reading this until i've read the remains of the day because i'm quite shocked that i haven't and i haven't even included that in the 40 books I wanted to read before I'm 40, but it is one such book. Um, so yes, I'm torn now. Do I read this one or do I read The Remains of the Day? Because I do like it when he writes sort of dystopic, and I believe this is about um, robots. Um, and I've read one of his other books, which has, I won't say what the title is or what the subject matter is, but it has a very dystopic twist. And I thought that was incredible. So yeah, I'm intrigued by this one, but um, yeah, torn. Do I read the classic or do I read that one? Then two books, uh, finally from publishers um, that sent me books. Um, 
that I've mentioned before on this channel, but these are finished editions, so I wanted to remind you of them. The first is Sorrowland by River Solomon. I wanted to read uh, River's work for a while. Um, they write about sort of, fant well, it's sort of fantasy, I think, meets dystopic. Um, and I believe this is about a woman who's pregnant, I think with twins, and she's running away from a cult that she's been part of, but it looks at the world around her which is other and how she feels other within that world so yeah I want to read this very very soon as I do Ariadne which I think the publishers also very kindly sent to my mother which is a retelling of the myth of Ariadne I feel like I need to say no more partly because I don't know very much about the myth of Ariadne but there we go so um yeah very very excited for this now on two books that was gifted this very kindly came from Francis who sent me this as a belated birthday gift or I think may have pre-ordered it and then it arrived post my birthday, but my wish list is gone now. And um, this is The Undocumented Americans by Carla Conejo Villa Vicentio. I hope I've said that right. Um, and this is um, about the author's experience as an undocumented American, but also the experiences of other people that they met. And that really interests me. Um, and this is the kind of non-fiction that I think will really, really sort of, I'll really get and I'll really learn from. And I think I will, I think it's going to change my perceptions on things in, like I'm very, I feel for people who have to leave wherever they live to move anywhere else. Like it's horrific, but I, I don't feel like I've read enough of those experiences. I feel like I shy away from them sometimes because they're almost too much to take on. Um, and that isn't really very responsible of me as a grown man. Um, so yeah, I, I really want to get to that soon. And then uh, my lovely friend Louisa, who works for Faber, came around and she brought, not only did she bring baked goods, she brought tulips um, and lots of giggles and chat and also some books, which is very, very exciting. So the first of those and the one that I think, well, no, Firstly, one is actually that I'm probably going to give my mum um, because, sorry, I thought my neighbours were watching me. They're not. They're looking at their own bushes, as it were. <laughs> anyway, um, but this one I'm going to give to my mum because I've not got on as well with this author, but my mum absolutely loves them. And this is The Country of Others by Leila Slimani, and it's out in August. So, yeah, when I next see my mother, she's going to get this one. I don't know what it's about. She can tell you maybe because it'll probably be one of the books that she loves uh, most this year because she does really, really love Leila Slimani's writing. I wasn't such a fan. Um, then I... Like I said, I want to read more essays, but I have said on this channel a few times recently that I shy away from books that deal with chronic illness because I have a chronic illness. I don't, even though I've known about it for like five, six, seven years now, I still sometimes think I'm slightly in denial about it and just want to carry on as usual. And so reading about other people's experiences, while could potentially be helpful, also sort of makes me have to think about my condition, which is called Durkham's. It's, it's a very rare condition um so anyway this book is one such book and i'm going to give it a whirl because it came so highly recommended by louisa it's places i've taken my body by molly mccully brown um, and i did have a flick through this and i thought these looked like my kind of thing they're very short sharp um well essays and vignettes about what what Molly's been through so yeah intrigued for this one as I am another selection of short sharp vignettes but I think this is just about life full stop um I actually know it's adventures in anxiety sorry it's my mess is a bit of a life by Georgia um Pritchett and um I flicked through this and just started absolutely howling with laughter so yeah um Georgia um is a writer for TV. She's written for shows such as Miranda. She's written for, uh, I think, Lenny Henry. Um, and so she's got this real wit and it really, really, really comes out in the uh, bits that I flicked through. Like I was literally laughing. It was one of those books where I was thinking, oh, hang on, I need to read this bit out. And I was like, to saying it to Louisa, who's already read it, but I was still reading her and Chris. Them. So um, yeah, I, there's subjects such as quack quack there's subjects oh does that mean she had a pet duck anyway i'll read it and i will report back so i'm very very excited for this one and last but not least i don't know anything about this book but louisa said i had to read it so i will because if somebody puts a book in your hand it's like you really really need to read this book and you know them really well and you know their reading taste and i should say louisa is um uh, a quake's editor and also edits um ingrid episode etc so yeah i'm like her taste is bang on mine. Um, but this is a debut, Boys Don't Cry by Fiona Scarlett. Don't know anything about it. 
we'll head to it soon and we'll let you know. But um, I'm, I'm keeping away from debuts until I finish reading all of the Desmond Elliott Prize long list, which is now out. So you'll know the 10 books that I'm reading at the moment. Then um, the author, Ellie Eaton, very kindly sent me an American edition of her book because I have the UK edition, but I just think this is so beautiful. I have mentioned this on the channel before. It's about, um, a, uh, I don't know if it's a boarding school or a private school. Uh, yeah, it's an English boarding school, an elite English boarding school. And I think it's about this group of girls who... Um, make themselves the popular girls and actually I think there's some much darker stuff going on so yeah I'm really really looking forward to it. just show you that cover thing because it is it's absolutely stunning so thank you very much Ellie for that in fact I'm now worried that I haven't thanked her on Instagram so I will do as soon as I finish recording this right on to books that I bought myself so one of my favorite thriller writers and um, because I pick them up I just get completely lost in them and also me and Pip well, it's a it's an author that me and Pip mutually love. Um, and I think Pip might have already read this one. I feel like I've said Pip quite a lot. Pip, Pip, Pip. <laughs> we will be back with Crime Time, uh, I think the second week of May, just to let you know, uh, where we'll be talking about... Um, see, when no one is watching, but I think also probably about some... Sherry Lapina, which was the um, author and the book that I was getting to. Um, this is The End of Her, which I think is her fourth or fifth? maybe even six, but I've read three, possibly four, and loved every single one because I just get lost in them, like I said, and they're just like a roller coaster thriller. So yeah, looking forward to this one very much. And um, I've seen Sophie over at Portland the Pages talk about this book, and um, she said it was quite a full-on read. So I think I'm gonna pace myself with this collection. It's um, Caleb Femi's Paul, and these are um, poems, but these are very much in the sort of, uh, Claudia Rankine sort of multimedia element so you've got photos and stuff within which really I think illustrate what I mean I love that picture of Joy there that picture is so lovely um and uh, yeah I'm really really excited to get to this but like I've heard Sophie say it's one that you need to not just sort of binge read you have to have breaks from it and sort of be in the right frame of mind for it. But yeah, very, very excited for this one. Now, I went to my first bookshop uh, on Monday, just gone uh, to Lingham's on the Wirral where I live. And um, I got two books there. The first of which was Alan Bennett's Two Besides, uh, which are a pair of talking heads, two new talking heads. I love Alan Bennett. I love his sense of humour. I love, how can I, there's, there's this Northern nature to it all, but also, I don't know, it's just the way he manages to like get certain lines that are so true to life. And he's another author where they make the ordinary extraordinary. And I just love that. So yeah, very, very much, very, very much looking forward to this. Um, and it was signed as well, which I was really, really chuffed by. Um, and then I also got um, The Colour by Rose Tremaine, which is one of the novels of hers that I don't own. I thought I had every single Rose Tremaine novel. Turns out not at all. I don't think I've even got half of them. So uh, what I want to do a lot more when I support um, bookshops going forward is not just pick up the newest release, but also try and get like, get a new release, but also get something from an author's back catalogue that I really love. They have just reissued loads of Rose Tremaine's um, books in these lovely editions, oh, lovely editions with like this bold colour. And then um, I'm tempted to like rebuy everything that I already own of hers, but I'm going to hold fire. Speaking of rebuying though, I went to um, some charity shops and bought four books uh, within them, within them. Whilst I was in them, I bought four books at different ones. The first of which was The Zed Murders by J. Jefferson Farjohn. Um, and um, yeah, I these are, sorry, I should say part of the British Library Crime Classics. Got home, realised I already had it. But I really, really loved his Mystery in White. And so every time I see him, I can never remember whether I've got his book or not. I should have some where on my phone a list of all the books on my shelves but I think that might make my head hurt making it um so uh, yeah so I will I don't know what I'll do with this one I shall pass it on to someone lovely I did intentionally buy a second copy of this book and that's the Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver as I mentioned um earlier I have a list of 40 books I would like to read by my 40th uh, which is next March and um, the Poison Mold Bible is one. I have a beautiful, beautiful edition of it. And this one, because it's a bit already worn, is the one I'm gonna read from. I also love this font. It makes me very happy indeed. There you go. Um, so yes, I bought myself that. Then I got um, Burning Bright by Helen Dunmore. Um, Helen Dunmore I've only discovered in the last couple of years. 
and um, I read her poetry collection, which I didn't love, which one the Costa, um, sadly after she died. Um, but then I read um, A Spell of Winter, is it A Spell of Winter? And thought that was absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, so I saw this, it was in really lovely condition for a secondhand book. And so I was like, right, I want more backlist by authors I really, really love. So there we go. And Leslie Glaister, now, I don't feel like, I could justify uh, buying Trick or Treat that much, other than her books are very hard to get a hold of. They're not all in print, um, but I've never actually read any of her books. I've always just heard that they sound really me, and a book with Trick or Treat in the title also sounds really me, and when a book is 50p, why not? That's how I felt about this. I do have slight torn feelings on charity shop books because, well, I was brought up on buying quite a lot of them. And, and in fact, a lot of the books I have on these shelves, I bought at a charity shop where it was like five for a pound. Um, but I do also, there is that thing of the author doesn't make anything from that. But I also think, wow, lots of thoughts. Um, I also think that you're more likely to go and buy a book buy a new book by an author you discover through a charity shop just as you do through a library, although libraries authors do make money from the books, um, and, and then go off and find more. That's what I think. Anyway, last but not least, um, one thing that I want to learn about, aside from seaweed, aside from cheeses, aside from DJing this year, is houseplants. And so I got myself Plantopedia, admittedly, after I'd bought six new houseplants, of which I've discovered a few are toxic for pets. Thankfully, though, before I get any comments of complaint or anything, um, my cats are just not interested in houseplants. They ignore them. They don't care about the Christmas tree. They don't care about any of the cacti I have. I'm very good with succulents, which sounds rude, um, but it's true. Um, so I'm much more interested in finding out about foliage trees, foliage trees, foliage plants. And like, I just want to buy all of them. I mean, look at that. That's, and this book makes it all really simple for you to sort of like, I mean, how pretty is that? Um, the, the images are stunning. Um, and it also says the information is like really short and to the point, so you just get it. And I really, really appreciate that. I also like books like this, that you know, you can sit on the coffee table or possibly put in the loo and just pick up here and there and uh, learn loads from them. So yeah, very, very excited for this. So there we go. Those are all the books that I got in the first half of April. What have you got in the first half of April? Let me know if you've got any of these. If you didn't enjoy them, don't tell me that. Hold fire on that thought. I'd love to talk about all the ins and outs of why you didn't enjoy a book that I've read once I've read it, but because I'm excited about them, I don't want to hear why you might not have liked them. Um, and uh, yeah, just anything else you want to have a chat about in the uh, comments down below, let's do it. I'm on top of comments at the moment. I'm really, really enjoying chatting to you all about this, that and the other. So on that note, I'll go. I will see you all tomorrow where um, when mine and Melanie's latest book club, uh, we can't speak, mine and Melanie's latest book club will go live where we're talking about Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. Um, and I'll be doing it as a premiere, so I will be chatting away with you all as it goes live for extra thoughts and all those kind of things. I will hopefully see you all then. Bye.